Good morning, dear friends, and greetings to all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a joy for us to be together again one more time. This is a brand new day. And before we get into the activities of this day, let us be quiet for just a few minutes as we meditate together from God's word. And that is important. And today's meditation is taken from the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 5, verse 26, where it says, the people, the crowd around Jesus we have seen strange things today. It was a remark made by some uh, people who were eyewitnesses to the teachings and forgiving of a sin of a sick man and then ultimately healing him of his sickness. Now Christianity and its message will always be strange to godless natural world. Christ and his miracles are still awakening in man the same wonder and amazement. Christ will ever remain a wonder as he was to his disciples and the people of his time. You remember even the disciples being with Jesus for so long Every time an amazing miracle happened, they question, ask this question to each other. What kind of a man is he? They still couldn't understand. He will ever will remain a mystery and a strange person into their estimation. Perhaps what you see and hear in this place at this time, may be strange, but if you listen long enough, something good begins to happen to you, and your life will never be the same again. When you go to church for the first time, or if you take a friend who comes along with you to church for the first time, he may notice Certain things happening in the church, a spirit-filled church, very, very strange. People lifting up their hands and praising God. And people uh, rejoicing while they sing. And people dancing sometimes. And out of their excitement, can uh, uh, certain things happen. Because Christianity and its practices are always strange to the people of this world. But if you listen and watch long enough and look at Jesus long enough, the Jesus whom we preach, you will begin to understand why this is so strange and this is different from any other religious activities of any other religion. And there are, they, they saw about five strange things uh, in this chapter. So I request you to read this chapter five, where Jesus is preaching and teaching and also healing the sick. And always crowds were there. And one man was brought there, a paralyzed man. And uh, he was carried by four people. And because of the crowd, they could not get in. So they went up to the roof of the building and lowered the man along with the bed in front of Jesus. This is the occasion. And so they notice about the five strange things. Number one, an illiterate man teaching. Now, someone teaching a group of students uh, is not a strange thing. But here, who were the students? The students who were Pharisees and Sadducees and doctors of the law of God. And uh, who was the teacher? 
an unlettered man who never been to a school. Matthew 13, 54, the same crowd began to ask of, of this incident, where does this man have all this knowledge and wisdom? And again, where does this man have all this wisdom? And again, in John's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 15, where does this man have this learning, having never learned in a school or college? And God himself said, listen to him. This is my beloved son. That is strange. That's what makes it strange. The students were highly qualified, degreed people, doctors of the law. And as far as Jesus was concerned, he had never been to a school. He never studied in a school. And yet, they could not understand the, the, the wisdom that was coming forth from the mouth of Jesus. And the second strange thing they noticed was, a sick man let down by the roof. Now, they have never seen anything like that before. It was a strange thing indeed. You know, people never saw anything like this before. The gospel according to St. Luke, the same gospel, chapter 5, verses 17 to 26. Those who believe in Jesus, the lesson is this. Those who believe in Jesus will some way or other will bring their burdens to him. And they will break anything that stands on their way of coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. They will not allow anything to stop them. And they looked around and could not break the crowd because there are so many people that they were pushing at each other and they were carrying this man on a bed and they found it impossible to penetrate and break the crowd and go to Jesus. But that did not stop them from doing what they wanted to do. What they wanted was to let this man be brought right in front of him. And they, they overcame the problem of the crowd. How? By climbing on the roof of the building and breaking the roof and letting the man along with the bed down. And in other words, they carried the burden, their burden, and they climbed up the roof of the building, made a hole, and then let down their burden before Jesus, right in front of him. Such a breaking of hindrances may seem a wastage of time and unnecessary to those onlookers who are unconcerned about the sick man's condition. And the crowd may not be concerned about your burden. You are struggling. You are, you are going through that terrible pain and discomfort. All may be true as far as you are concerned, but the crowd around you are least bothered about what is happening to you. Such burden must lead us to the breaking up of everything that stand between us and the Lord. You know, that is very important, my friends, for us to understand. If you want to come to Jesus, that is one thing the devil does not want you. He doesn't want you to go to Jesus because once you come to Jesus and have a confrontation with Jesus, your life will never be the same. The, the devil will lose you to Jesus. And therefore, there will be all kinds of stumbling blocks and, uh, and, and uh, hindrances on the way. 
But if you are set your mind on reaching Jesus with your burden, because you have been carrying that burden for a long time, my friends, it is time for you to come to Jesus and don't allow anything to hinder you. You are the needy person, not others. And so you break all the hindrances. Come to Jesus. To break away from the burdens, we must break up the hindrances. And the third strange thing they noticed was a man forgiving sins. You know, the first thing Jesus spoke to this, this sick man was, my son, your sins are forgiven. Now the crowd murmured, forgive sins? Who can forgive sins except God? Yes, it is a strange thing they have seen that. A man forgiving another man's sin. Yes, the Jews, only for, the, for a Jew, only Jehovah God could forgive sin. Let them know the greatness of of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the grace of Jehovah flowing through his son Jesus Christ. It was God forgiving the sin of this man. They needed to know that. Christ is divine. He is God incarnate. He alone can forgive sin because God the Father has made him the channel of his blessings. So Jesus Christ is the way to God the Father and enjoy all the grace and all the blessings that, the God, that God the Father gives. And fourthly, what is the fourth strange thing they saw? A man who could read their thought. That was a strange thing. In verse 22 of fifth chapter of Gospel of Luke, Jesus perceived their thought. Jesus knew what they were thinking. Now Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13 says, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. And Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 5 says, Thus said the Lord, I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. Even the very imagination of man, this God can read from afar off. A very strange things man witnessed that day. But those who know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior know how true it is. Nothing is hidden. The deep, deepest thing that is lying within your heart, he sees and he knows. And the fifth and the last strange thing they notice well, a man perfectly healed at once. And the word of God says in this chapter, immediately he stood up in front of them took what he had been lying on and went home praising God. Because that's what Jesus said. Son, you rise up and pick up your bed and go home. You know what Jesus was saying? Look, all these years, 
this bed was carrying you all around. But now the time has come. Receive your healing immediately. He had that strength and the power surging through his muscles and through his entire body. And he felt that he must use that power. He picked up his bed and he began to walk. Forgiving sin and healing were done suddenly and completely. This was another strange thing they have seen. They have never seen this before. Here is a man who healed and forgave sin at the same time. At the same time, this man received that complete forgiveness and complete healing. He became a new creation. It was such a blessed thing that the man could immediately rise up and uh, go to his own home, his own house. Isn't that wonderful? Glorifying God, letting the world know that something marvelous has happened to me. Man's chief end is what? Man's chief end is glorify God. But that end is lost unless man is healed and forgiven by the grace of God. And when you receive that healing and that forgiveness, you are changed. You suddenly are awakened to God's purpose for your life and that is to bring glory to God. And so, let it happen to you and let it happen to someone else today through you as you give yourself to the Lord for him, him to use you. And this is God's purpose for your life. It can, by the grace of God. And so today is a day of opportunity. Let someone else be blessed by what you can do for the such people. Such man, such a woman who is in need. The Lord's grace be upon you. And this is a great day, my friend. Enjoy this day in its fullness by the grace of God. At the end, you will come to your room before you lay down on to sleep. You will have that great joy of helping somebody to become a new person in Jesus Christ Fulfilling God's purpose of glorifying God. Amen. God bless you.